All right, Aventon fans, this is their latest creation. It's called the Cinch 2. It is a fold-up 20 by 4 inch bike. And let's start off by talking about the assembly process with this bike. There is none. <laughs> I was very surprised. It came in the box. I opened it up. I unpacked it and it was already assembled. Then I just unfolded it, put the handlebars up, and this bike is ready to go. The Cinch is a class two e-bike, which means it'll go 20 miles via your thumb throttle or your pedal assist. This bike only comes in one size and it can accommodate riders that are 4'11 to 6'2. It comes in two colors, a Quicksilver or this really nice Sapphire Blue. This bike weighs 68 pounds and it can accommodate a maximum payload of 300 pounds. The Cinch 2 only comes in a step through model making it really easy to get on and off the bike. And you can get this bike right now on their website for $17.99. Aventon also says that the Cinch 2 will go 55 miles using pedal assist and 22 miles using throttle only. Now I did look and that was tested on flat land with a 160 pound rider. I'm 220 pounds, that's right. I dropped 10 pounds since I last weighed myself thinking I was 230. And we're gonna go ahead and do a distance test on this bike today to see how far it's gonna go. The Cinch 2 uses a 500 watt, 750 watt peak, 48 volt rear hub motor. It also has 30 Newton meters of torque. It has a Shimano eight speed transmission, an Aventon label derailleur and trigger shifters with this really cool looking display. For stopping power, you have a Tektro mechanical disc brake system with 180 millimeter rotors on the front and rear. As you guys know, I love hydraulic brakes, but we're gonna be finding out how well these mechanical brakes work today. So let's talk battery. Aventon says that the Cinch 2 comes with a 48 volt, 14 amp, 672 watt hour battery, but mine showed up with a 636 watt hour battery. I know it's only about 40 watt hours of difference, but I'm not really sure how that's going to affect the overall distance of this bike. There's two ways to charge the battery. You can leave the battery in the bike and just use this charging port right here, or you can pull the battery out by using one of two keys that's provided to you. You just turn it, it pulls right out, and you can take it to your charger. The charger that comes with it, it's a 48 volt, three amp battery, which will take your bike from zero to hero in four to five hours. One of the main features of the Cinch 2 is the fact that it now uses a torque sensor. And with that, you have four levels of pedal assist. You have Eco, Touring, Sport, and Turbo. One thing we can't overlook is how smooth and non-existent the welds are on every Aventon bike. Not only does it make it look more professional, but it just gives it that ultimate clean look. Another feature is the dual brake lights and turn signals. It comes with an adjustable front suspension. It has about 55 millimeters of play. We're rocking some Innova 20 by four inch tires. It has a really nice street pattern on it and I'm really digging the tan sidewalls. Some of the other features of the Cinch 2 is the quick release post. You have metal fenders, you have a rear rack and foldable pedals. The process for folding your Cinch up is pretty simple. You're just gonna unhook the latch here. Let it fall. You're gonna move this tab forward and then we're just gonna fold it up. Cockpit operations. To turn your bike on, all you're gonna do is hold down on the plus button till your display lights up. You'll use the plus and minus symbol to bounce around through your pedal assist levels. You have off, eco, tour, sport, and turbo. These left and right buttons right here is for your turn signals. By holding this, the plus button, it turns on your headlight. When you turn on your headlights, your tail lights will also light up. To bounce through the different menus of the bike, you're just gonna press your little I button here in the middle quickly. It'll tell you various things. And if you want to track like your trip data, you're just gonna push down on the two turn signal buttons at the same time real quick. And it's gonna pull up your trip information. If you wanna get into the systems menu, you're gonna hold the plus and minus symbol down until that pops up. And this is where you can clear your trip data. You can control your screen brightness. You can set the unit, whether you want 
miles per hour or kilometers, system info, and here is where you connect to the app. And by doing that, you download the Eventon app and it will tell you to add a bike. And then you just scan this QR code and it sets it up immediately. Over here is a nice feeling pair of grips. You have your brake lever. On your right hand side, you have your thumb throttle. You can see which gear you're in right here. You got your trigger shifters, which makes it easy so you don't have to take your hand off the grip when shifting the gears and your rear brake lever. It is time to take the cinch out on the road so I can put it through its paces and see how it does. Now there is a chance of rain today. It's also pretty windy. Uh, I did bring my rain jacket with me and I do want to mention that if it does rain it this bike will be fine this is rated uh, IPX4 which means that it's okay to uh, get rain on it and stuff the only thing you don't want to do is like drop it in the lake so if it does rain we'll be good to go these trigger shifters also work a little bit different um, normally with a trigger shifter you like click in the gear and then, or to go down, and then you use your back finger on the back side of the grip to click up. But with this, you use your thumb for both. So you click down with the gear or you put your thumb behind that and you click back up. That's interesting. It's gonna take a little bit to get used to, but it totally makes sense to me. I think I like that feature. So far it's riding exactly how I expect it would. Pretty comfortable. Like always, added a couple safety features. This bike does not come with a bell, so I added one to it. I just took one off of my other bikes. Added my side mirror and my strobe light. Let's talk size and fit. Now, this saddle is where I like it. Um, the very minimum, though, is down to here. That's the minimum. I guess that's where your 411 people come in. And then goes all the way up to here for your 6'2", and that's where that position would be. Let's take a look and see how tall it is, because this is how I get it into the garage. So there we go. That is the height of it. Actually, it's shorter than me. I mean, I can see right over the top of it, which I guess it would be for a fold-up bike. Okay, let's get back on the road. And here we are for the hill test. We're gonna use throttle only to see if it will make it up this hill. Um, I do have it in sport. I don't think that actually matters when it comes to the throttle, but I wanna just give it every, uh, you know, every option it can to make it up this hill. We're gonna do it from a dead stop. Let's see how it works. Oh, it's getting steep now. Look at that. I cannot believe this thing is getting it done. I ended up running back to the house. I had to get some gloves. It's a little bit colder than what I thought it was gonna be. And I put on my rain jacket windbreaker. I mean, it all counts anyways. We're just tracking how long we can go back out here on the 606 trail. Now, before I had put my gloves on, I was feeling these grips and it didn't take long to get used to. Actually, they felt pretty good. So I don't think anything has to change with those. All right, guys, we are 13 miles in. We have 65% battery left. And I can tell you right now that this ride has been effortless. I don't know, I, I, I'm really digging the tires. I'm digging how this thing sits and it's just pretty comfortable on its own. The front shocks is doing its job for sure. And I think the gumminess of these tires make it super comfortable to ride. So let's, let's keep moving down the road. With this bike being a class two instead of a class three, I was trying to think about like, what would be the use of having these different modes that you could have with the Eco Tour, you know, Sport and uh, Turbo. 
And what I've come to learn is, I mean, you're locked out at 20 miles an hour, but basically what it's going to do is it's going to help you get up a hill easier the higher setup that you have. I kept hearing this rubbing noise and see this cable right here? It's, it's rubbing up against the tire to the point to where it starting to wear the, and I think this is for the brake lights and stuff, but it's starting to wear the cable. I don't know if you can see it here. I guess I'm gonna have to start carrying zip ties with me for when I have stuff like this going so I can kind of tie that away from there. So right now I'm just trying to find a quick solution to see if I can keep it from doing that. Might just have to check on it more than once. Let's see if I can disconnect. <laughs> I just disconnected the battery. And if I can run this cable through the other side of it, there we go. And we'll just stick this puppy back together. Where's my arrows? There they are. Ah, look at that. Now I have the clearance I need. Not sure if you guys can see that, but now I have the clearance I need and it shouldn't hit. And then when I get home, we'll just, we'll work on it. All right, let's go ahead and do our zero to 20. We have, we are ready to go. I do have it in turbo. We're just using throttle only. So let's see how long that takes. Ready, go. Twenty-two seconds. Okay, we're gonna do the zero to twenty with uh, pedal assist. Now, I'm gonna try it in eco first. We're gonna see if it's gonna get us there any quicker. Then we'll try up in the different levels to see if there's any difference. Here we go. Start. I'm in. Oh, gear eight. We're gonna crank it. Let's go. Let's go. All right, that was like ten seconds. We're in tour, and let's go. Let's see if that'll get us there faster. All right, well, about 10 seconds again. All right, we are in sport. Start, let's go. All right, that was like seven seconds. So there's not really much of a difference between the first two pedal assists, but when you hit turbo, I mean, when you hit sport, you're good. So let's see how turbo does. And we're in turbo, let's go. Ooh, slow start. That was my fault. Oh yeah, like six, seven seconds. Woo. All right, not bad. Let's get some gloves on, it's cold. Let's see how accurate the speedometer is. As you can see, looks like we're off by one mile per hour. I do like the fact that this does have eight gears to it. I mean, even though the bike is just a class two, just having that eighth gear, it always helps. It always just makes it, there's no ghost pedaling with this bike, although I wouldn't feel there would be, but it just confirms that there isn't. It makes it nice. The more I use this thumb throttle with this different setup, the more I like it. <laughs> oh, that's a cool looking tree. I don't think I've ridden on this side. Get a little bit of that little off-road action because that's what this bike can handle. I mean, I couldn't imagine taking this thing on a mountain bike trail, but this kind of stuff, no problem. We are at 46% battery power. We're on 16 miles in, and we're gonna start heading back uh, just because this weather was colder than what I originally thought it was going to be today. And I know that it's putting a hurting on this battery because cold weather and batteries do not mix. So let's get heading back. Hopefully I'll find a space to do a brake test safely. Let's see what happens. All right, we're going for brake test number one. I found an empty parking lot. So we're gonna do it. This bike will only do 20 miles an hour. So let's hit the brakes once we hit my little spot here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 15 feet. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know if it's these tires which I really feel have something to do with it because it just feels good. I mean, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of mechanical brakes, but it seems to be doing just fine. Uh, here we go. Brake test number two. I 
I'm at 20, so we're just waiting until I hit the spot. Ooh. Well, that says 18. You know what? We're going to do it one more time. To me, that's too much of a difference for a bike that can only do 20. We're at 20. Oh, the back end almost came up a little bit. Yeah, it did come up. All right, 17 feet. I mean, the other one was 18, this was 17, so now we know. Now the question is, do I have enough battery to make it home? I was like, am I slowing you down? <laughs> no, not at all. How bright was that turn signal? Was you able to see it? Yeah, actually. Okay, good. I'm reviewing this bike, so I don't even know. Right. Now we're gonna take just a leisurely cruise down the 606 as we head home. I still have 31% battery power, so it looks like I'll probably have to do a couple of uh, laps around this place before we run out of battery. I would just rather do it closer to the home than farther away. With some of these foldable bikes, they have like shorter handlebars. And because these are wider, it really makes riding this bike feel very comfortable. It's, I mean, it doesn't even feel like I'm riding a foldable bike. And that in itself is pretty awesome. We are now at 17%, we're at 22 miles. And I can tell that when the battery gets low, well, it kind of surges a little bit when it comes to the power. So just keep in mind that that's gonna happen when you start getting low on battery. Now we're just heading up and down my little 606 trail as we wear the battery out. I'm really enjoy I'm really just surprised on how this bike doesn't even ride like a smaller foldable bike. I can see where somebody could just take this out for like a long leisurely ride and just have a ball with it. I'm just really a big fan of these tires. You know, every time I try a bike and I review it, <laughs> I, you know, certain bikes I'm like, oh, my wife would love this. And uh, I think this would be one that she would be very comfortable on. I think that about most of them, but uh, some I feel like she would respond to better than others. And this is one of those bikes that I think that she would, that she would enjoy. We are down to 8% battery. We're at 25 miles and we are still moving. I can definitely see how if somebody just had this bike in Eco and you were just cruising around at like 15, 18 miles an hour, that you could get crazy range out of this bike. So I have it in turbo right now, you know, just trying to finish this battery out. I guess I could use the throttle, but I just want to kind of make it a little bit more realistic as, you know, what someone would actually do. Plus, this bike makes you want to just pedal it. I'm very impressed with it, to, be, to tell you the truth. I mean, I really am. I will want to take this to the, uh, to drop it off at the bike lane where I take my bikes because uh, every once in a while it does make this weird noise and I feel like it's coming from the back. I do think it could be that these mechanical brakes need just a little adjusting and from there, it'll probably be golden. I often forget to mention that the, uh, this color display does have a USB port down at the bottom that will trickle charge your phone while you're riding. So when you go on these long trips, and let's say you had a phone holder right there, you could charge, well, you could keep your phone charged. That's not gonna like take it from zero to 100, but it can totally keep you from running out of battery while riding. And during this ride, I've had some sunny moments and it's been mostly overcast, but you can see the screen very clear I'm just kind of bummed that that doesn't have a voltmeter because then I would know how close to being out of battery I am. Right now we're at 5%, so I should be able to make it home. I think I'm about a mile out. The battery does show that we're at 0%, but I still have power coming to the bike. So I'm pretty sure that by the time I make it home, we should be out. That is it. We are now no longer using any battery power. And we just, <laughs> right there, we just hit 30 miles. So 30 miles is what it's gonna be. It's time to give you my final thoughts. We are back. You know what, this, this bike did excellent. I really enjoyed riding it. I did like the fact that these handlebars are wider and because of that, it didn't make me feel like I was riding a foldable bike. As a matter of fact, normally if there has this long stem right here, you feel like a little bit unsupported on that. Didn't, didn't feel wobbly or anything with this bike. It could be because of the awesome tires that are on it. I do love those tires. 
the mechanical brakes, they work just fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that the reason they put mechanical brakes on this instead of hydraulic is because it folds. And I'm thinking that might be the reason. But besides that, oh, let's, let's, let's trade out this seat. <laughs> For me, I, I felt that after 30 miles, definitely. And I believe that, you know, I, I always seem to change the seats out when it comes to the bikes that I get from a Venton. I'm just not a fan of this one. You might be, maybe not. Um, I will put a suspension seat post on this. We'll change out the seat and this bike will be perfect. I do really enjoy the color of this thing. I think it looks great. The blue with the white and the tan tires. I was able to get more mileage out of this than I thought I was gonna be able to, but that's just part of it and it's just a bonus. Now, if you are interested in this bike, please go ahead and use my link that's in the description. Not only does it help support this channel, but it does let Aventon know that you value my videos. We did it, we made it to the end, and that covers my review on Avington's Cinch 2. So until I see you again, enjoy the ride.